Ramai pula nak join kita nak start. Okay, then let let them wait in the waiting room first. We will start the session. Then we will add them. Okay. <coughs> so ready record, right? Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Let us, uh, let us uh, start our session today with Umul Furqan Al-Fatiha. A'uzubillahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-Rahmanir Rahim maliki yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in ihdinas suratal mustaqim. Surat al-lazin an'amta alayhim ghayri al-magdubi alayhim waladdubin. Amin. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa hlul ukratan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi yasir wa la tuasir wa tamim bi khair. Alhamdulillah, hmm, I would like to introduce myself first. My name is uh, uh, Nur Arfifah. You can call me Madam Arfifah or the students. Yeah? Uh, I'm... Uh, Department of from Department of Business Admin. Insyaallah today I'll be the moderator for the sessions. Uh, before we start, I would like to uh, welcome all the lecturers. Uh, we have here we have our speakers, Dr. Ridwan Funtin, Alhamdulillah, and then we have other our other colleagues, eh? Dr. Dahadi, and I can see Dr. Zairina, Dr. Nick Hizman. And all the students are here. We also have our respected um, presidents of MSAS who work with us, eh? Brother Zahid Muslim Jasmani. Thank you for your for for your team efforts to promote this program. Yeah? Uh, the program is a, is uh, 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 the objective is for welcoming our students, yeah? especially our new. This is the new semester. We like to welcome our students uh, to have a. Uh, 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 right motivations yeah, to have uh, to to have to actually to start fresh yeah, this semester uh, semester one October 2001 2002 by having a, a motivational talk inshallah uh, with our uh, Dr. Ridwan Fontaine uh, uh, the, the title of the talk will be the keys to success yeah so uh uh, before we invite him, I would like to just say something about Dr. Ridwan for those maybe new students here to join our sessions. Okay, Alhamdulillah, uh, we have here Dr. Ridwan. Dr. Ridwan Fontaine is half French, eh? uh, half British, mashallah. Okay. He was born in UK in 1970s uh, because he, he shared this message. So, uh, he's very experienced, yeah? experienced, uh, and he, to just to let all of you know, Dr. Ridwan also was my lecturer for my master class, and he also was my mentor during when I started uh, being a lecturer in the Department of Business Admin. Uh, he converted to Islam at the age of 23. He has worked in three multinational, before, uh, multinational companies before coming to Malaysia in 1999. Uh, have you won? 1999, he has married locally and has three uh, uh, boys. Eh? Uh, he has taught at MMU and MSU before joining IIUM in 2010. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and then now at IIUM, Dr. Ridwan teach Islamic management in the Department of Business Administration. Uh, not only that, he also teach uh, organizational behavior, strategic management, and the new subject that we offered, uh, Big Data for Managers. He has published a number of books on Islamic management, and his research on uh, is focused on extracting lessons from Quran for Muslim men. Yeah. For them, uh, admin all. Okay, that's about uh, Dr. Ridwan Fontin. Uh, I also learned a lot from him. Inshallah, today we will inshallah get benefit from his sharing. Without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Ridwan Fontaine uh, to share his uh, talk eh, uh, today with us. Uh, okay. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, uh, first of all, welcome to everyone. 
Uh, again, apologies, my uh, screen is, um, oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Mm -hmm. You have to enable me. Oh, enable. Okay. Yeah, screen sharing. Um, so I have a problem with my camera, uh, but inshallah, that's going to be a, a minor problem. Okay, uh, enable. So... <laughs> Either that or you just... Uh, okay. Can I just share for you? Yeah, show, show the PowerPoints. Okay. Maybe the, you can start for a while. I will... Yeah. So the when I was asked to give this talk, uh, the first thing that came to my mind, of course, is the key to success is Iman. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is understood. Uh, but even though it's understood, it still has to be emphasized. But as part of our Iman, we have to uh, make the effort, we have to plan properly, we have to, you know, uh, we cannot just be relaxed about things. Um, and this is sometimes when you uh, study conventional management uh, literature, you find some very exciting theories that actually allows us to be more productive as Muslims. And in this case, I'm going to talk about uh, a theory that was developed by someone called Carol Dweck, who is a social psychologist at Stanford University in the United States. And she has done lots and lots of research, uh, which is basically you can find it all over the internet. And it's something called growth mindset. Now, this is now really awkward because the slides are not <laughs> up yet. Yes, 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 it's already but it, now. It, okay. okay. It's almost ready. Okay, coming yeah. up, coming up. Coming Sabah, up. Sabah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always hiccup, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Now I can share. Wait. Stop share. share when I came to Malaysia in uh, 1999, one of the first things that I learned is uh to use the word sabar and unfortunately my children are using that with me all the time <laughs> okay can you see my screen yes okay, okay. alhamdulillah okay so uh full full okay. okay okay so um okay the... next one next one next okay next Okay, so very simply, this is not going to be an academic uh, presentation. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a very short uh, discussion. And then I'm going to give you uh, stories of our uh, graduates who have been very successful in their careers. So one of the things that Carl Dweck found is that some people have got a growth mindset. And a growth mindset is simply you believe that by working hard, by making effort, you can develop your intelligence, you can develop your talent, right? So talent and intelligence is not something that is fixed. It's literally, it's something that develops because of your hard work. There are other people who have got a fixed mindset and they basically see themselves as you're either born smart or you're born not smart. And they don't really see that effort is important. And so that's a fixed mindset. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is, if you go into the detail, uh, I mean, obviously, if I was doing this in class, I would talk about this for maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But uh, one thing that is very clear is if you've got a fixed mindset, uh, your main goal is to protect your reputation. Uh, you don't think that effort is necessary because you believe that you're born with intelligence or talent. You're, you don't want to challenge yourself because you're afraid of failing. You are very afraid of failing because you see that as very threatening to your reputation. And you basically ignore the feedback of whoever is around you because again, you see this as a criticism. People with a growth mindset are basically, their focus is to make progress. They obviously understand that they have to make effort. They're going to challenge themselves, even though they risk failure, but they know that challenging themselves is important. 
they do not like failure. Nobody likes failure, but they understand that failing is part of the learning process. And they go out and they get feedback. And based on this feedback, they continue to grow. Okay, so very simply, this is the difference between growth mindset and fixed mindset. And, uh, you know, there are lots and lots of research that has shown that this is true. If you go into the detail, it's absolutely fascinating. For example, we know that people who have got a fixed mindset are more likely to cheat in exam, right? Why? Because they don't want their friends to think that they're stupid, so they will cheat rather than going through the process of learning, okay? If you've got a growth mindset, you're not going to cheat in the exams, okay? So what I'm saying is that people have done a lot of research and looked at this in a lot of detail. I'm just kind of giving a, a very big picture view of these uh, two, two concepts. Okay, next. Okay, so I'm gonna tell four stories. One is a Saudi student, whoops, too quick. Okay, so one is a, a, a Saudi student. I have completely forgotten her name. Um, but anyway, I'll tell, I'll tell you a little bit about her. Uh, then uh, three guys, Ayman, Amir, and Migat. Okay, next slide. So this uh, student was one of my uh, OB students. And one day she came to my office and she asked me for a reference letter. I said, okay, so who am I supposed to write a reference letter to? So she said she wanted to do a master's in education at Harvard University. So I was very surprised, obviously. And to be honest, my first thought that came to my mind is this girl is crazy. Uh, but then I said, okay, let's talk about it. And so she explained to me uh, what she was passionate about, apart from the normal uh, lectures that she was attending at, at the university, she was also doing some online classes. And I realized that in fact, she had a very ambitious vision, um, but it, it was not like um, a silly idea. She, she actually, she was very motivated. She was very hardworking. She wanted to try this. She know that, or she knew that it was, you know, maybe difficult to achieve, but at least she wanted to try. So, okay, so uh, we, we together, we kind of, I drafted the reference letter. I helped her kind of fine tune the, the story that she would tell uh, people at Harvard. And I wrote uh, a letter to Harvard and she got accepted. And uh, she also got a scholarship. But what was interesting is because the OB class was still ongoing, so of course I knew that she had been accepted into Harvard and I was observing her in class and I, I looked at her final exam. Yes, she was a good student, but she was definitely not the best student in my class. And this struck me that we have a lot of students who have got the potential to enter Harvard at a master's level Basically, Harvard is not as difficult as you think it is. That's my conclusion of this story. Uh, but for the majority of people, the idea would not even cross their mind. Okay, so I'm not saying with this story that everybody should try to get into Harvard. That's not what I'm trying to say. But what I'm saying is that sometimes we don't achieve certain things because the possibility never enters our minds. Okay. So this idea of why is it that some people do better than others? Well, sometimes it's as, simp as simple as some people are willing to dream the impossible dream, whereas other, but everybody else, they're kind of just going the conventional path that they have been told this is what you should do. And sometimes we, we people impose limitations on themselves. So if you ask people, can you do this? Can you say, oh, no, I'm not good enough for that. I'm not good enough for this. I'm not good, you know? So we, we kind of create our own limitations. And this is something that I think as a lecturer, I've seen many, many, many times, okay? So this idea of if you're gonna have a, a good dream, obviously you gotta work for it, 
But if you put in a lot of work, uh, hard work, but you don't have a dream that you're pursuing, that also doesn't work. Okay, next slide. So this is uh, Ayman. Uh, these are terrible photos. <laughs> I, I asked him, all of the, my students who gave me their photos, I asked their permission first. And I don't know why he gave me these two photos. Uh, there are much better photos of him, but never mind. Uh, so the, the thing with Ayman that uh, I always, always found interesting is his first semester, he had a GPA of 2.2. It was ap his first semester was a complete disaster. And the reason why his first semester was a complete disaster is his approach to studying uh, as a new student was completely wrong. But of course, he didn't know any better because it was the first time literally that he was studying at university. Uh, but he was very lucky because his brother did UIA, uh, was a Kulia of economic student as UIA as well. So he went to his brother and his brother basically said, look, the way you're studying is completely wrong. And his brother basically gave him a few tips. Uh, the main tip that he learned from his brother is uh, the first semester when he did his group assignments, he let other people be the group leader. And he realized that when you let other people be the group leader, then if you're lucky, you have a good group leader. And if you're not lucky, you end up with a really bad group leader and your group assignments are a disaster, even though you put in the hard work. So one of the things he decided to do is every group assignment, he would insist on being the group leader. And obviously as a group leader, he has a lot of work and you know, not everybody likes the group leader, but he just wanted to, to, you know, his group assignments to do very well. And he was a, a four flat student at the end. Uh, he completed his master's in finance. So I don't know why after he finished his undergraduate, he decided to grow a beard. So the picture with him as a beard, that's, that's his master's uh, picture. And he's now pursuing his PhD in finance in Australia. Uh, now, here there's a very simple lesson, which I think just proves the idea of a growth, growth mindset, right? If you believe that intelligence is fixed, then if he had started his academic career with a CGPA of 2.2, then he should finish his, CG, his academic career with a 2.2. Right, but literally his CGP had nothing to do with his level of intelligence. It didn't even have anything to do with his effort because he was always a very motivated student even in the first semester. It's literally, if you have the wrong approach to your studies, uh, it doesn't work out. And that's something that normally new students struggle the first semester because the way to study at uh, university is so different, even compared to foundation studies, it is actually very different. And so this is where you need to maybe uh, check with your lecturers or check with your, your students that you know who are seniors who are doing you know, very well, like what's the best way for you to handle your, stu your, your, students, your studies? Now, I know everybody is different. Some people like to study alone. Some people like to study in groups. Some people like to study in a library. Some people, you know, so you've got to figure out what works for you. But there's a lot of trial and error. And generally, if you're not getting a good result in your studies, it's because you have the wrong study technique. And so that's something you have to fix. Okay, next slide. So this is Amir. <laughs> this is a very, very interesting guy. So basically the first thing about this guy is he comes from Skola Tafis. And um, he was my student in a couple of my classes. And I actually managed to persuade him to teach me Quran uh, during Ramadan. So he basically correct, we, we decided during one of Ramadan, he would just, we would just focus on Surat Ar-Rahman. And so basically he corrected my Surat Ar-Rahman. 
And that was one of the best Ramadan that I ever had. And since then, I've always tried to find students from a uh, Tafis background. And I know some of them, but a lot of them are too shy to come and, and share their knowledge with their lectures. I don't know why. Uh, so anyway, I'm just putting that out there. If you are from a Tafis background, uh, especially if you're a male student, because that obviously uh, from ethical point of view is easier, then uh, come and talk to me and then inshallah we, we, can, we can discuss, uh, especially Ramadan is only around the corner. Um, he is basically, he was very active in, in uh, Dawa, very, he's a very, um, he's also doing a lot of social projects, but he was terrible as a student. <laughs> he was always coming late to class and you know, half the time in the class, he was sleepy. But I got to know him a little bit, well, reasonably well. And I know this guy is very smart. And, and he's very motivated. He's got a lot of projects. So like, what was going on? So it's only later through some other of his friends that I found out that actually he had a lot of uh, social projects uh, around the university. So he actually set up a um, a tuition center for underprivileged uh, children. Uh, a little bit, uh, there's one area, a uh, poor area outside the university. And he was managing that. And he was, he, he was also very passionate about going to Kampung Orang Asli and so on and so forth. So I questioned him. We, we had a lot of discussion uh, about this. And he always knew that he wanted to be an entrepreneur. So for him, having a high CGPA was kind of not relevant to his plans for the future. Um, and indeed, after he graduated, I think he graduated with 2.8, which is still quite okay. Uh, he set up an Islamic kindergarten in uh, Semenier. And now, apart from that, which is still ongoing, he did, uh, he's doing a digital marketing business. And he's my neighbor. So I, I've been to his house a couple of times. Um, and I met him at, actually a couple of months ago. So he graduated about four years ago and he had very, very tough four years. And, and this is something that I think I always try to tell my students. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, if they start their own business, they will be successful very quickly, right? Because they say, oh, I have a good plan. I'm going to work hard. So for sure, I'm going to be successful. That's not the way it works. Now, I consider him a, a success because he survived COVID-19. His business is still surviving. And actually, uh, when I saw him a couple of months ago, he had a big smile in his face and then he found some new networking opportunities. So he's actually, inshallah, he's gonna be successful soon. But he has been struggling for the last four years. So never ever think that being your own business uh, entrepreneur is an easy route. route. It's probably the most difficult route that you can take. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the, the picture below is, uh, this is Kampung Orang Asli, Dekat uh, Ipo. And uh, anyway, there, there's one uh, society in the university that did a lot of work. I, I think still does a lot of work with Kampung Orang Asli. And I found that was a very, very good experience. Okay, next. So this is Migat. Uh, he was my research assistant. He is a kind of a brilliant accounting uh, student. Um, he, he's, he, he can do anything. He's one of these students, he can do anything. He, he's also very creative. So he can be like the super accountant, the super businessman, the, the super artist, he can pretty much do whatever he wants. Um, it was a bit unfortunate that his father had a stroke. I think he was in his uh, second year when his father had a stroke. And so his mother is basically uh, taking care of uh, the father. Uh, obviously, the father is um, bedridden, cannot get out of the bed. Um, and so... Megad decided rather than uh, become an accountant, he basically took over the mother's bakery um, and he's, he wants to be there for the mother and for the father. Um, 
he is uh, again very very dynamic um even though he had a lot of problems with COVID-19 again his business had a lot of problems with COVID-19 uh he managed to expand so he he went from uh, he opened another branch uh in Kada and in fact he agreed to be my sponsor for my strategic marketing class so uh, one of the projects that I have is I try to keep touch with our students who graduate and basically invite them to become speakers so that they share their uh, experience as graduates of IUM to current students of IUM. Uh, so inshallah, I will be recording his uh, experiences tonight, and then I will be sharing that with my students. Um, but he, he again had a very, very tough time in, in the COVID-19. His business had a very tough time and alhamdulillah, he's still in business and doing quite well. Okay, next slide. So what mindsets do they have? Of course, if this, if this was a kind of class discussion we would discuss, uh, I think the way that I describe them, it's quite obvious they all three have a growth mindset. Okay. Question, who is the most successful person out of them? This is kind of an irrelevant question, right? Because if you think about it, they all have four very different dreams and they are, they are all pursuing their own dreams. So how, why are we comparing one another to one another? Or, or how do we dare say, oh, such and such a person is more successful than such and such a person? It doesn't make sense, right? Um, the, the third question, who has the highest CGPA is completely irrelevant, <laughs> okay? Now, the reason I make this point is when I talk to a lot of students, they're so obsessed with the CGPA and they're so obsessed with what their friends are doing and whether their friends are getting a better CGPA than them. It's like, why? Why are you worried about these things? It's, it's not relevant. The issue is, do you have a vision for yourself, number one? And number two, are you working to achieve that vision? And everything else is almost irrelevant. I mean, um, for me, my, my real hero is uh, Amir. Because I think that the road that he chose was the most difficult of them all. And, and I was actually very worried that he would um, be depressed because of uh, the negative impact of his, um, uh, of the risk of, of, you know, the business environment on, on his business. And I was afraid that he would have to close down his, uh, um, um, his uh, Islamic kindergarten and so on and so forth. But alhamdulillah, he, he managed to survive. I don't know how he did it. But as I said, when I saw him the other day, he was happy, he was smiling, he was joking. And it's not a fake joke. Like, we, I know him very, very well. He, he has told me a lot of his personal problems running his business and so on and so forth. So when I saw him smiling the other day, it's because he really is, he has become a very, very resilient person. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Oops. Okay, we have slight technical problem. So one of the things that I'm interested in is there's a quite a big gap between uh, the perception of students and what employers are looking for. And the next slide that I have, is, which is a very wonderful slide, inshallah, <laughs> uh, kind of shows that again and again, there's a lot of statistics that shows that what students think employers want and what employers actually want is completely different. 
and primarily a lot of students are so obsessed with their thank you with their cgpa and they're also very very worried that they don't have any working experience and i keep telling to the students you are not going to get a job because you've got a high cgpa you're not going to, people know that you don't have working experience. So they will take that into consideration. Uh, Dr. Ridwan? Yes. Are you, can you see the slide that you- I cannot see the slides. The slides, because the slide is already there. The, the, that's like a chart, right? Yeah. Tapi tanapa. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, the, the, the point is that there's a, there's a big gap in expectation. And what I try to share with my students is don't think about uh, your, your life at IUM simply in terms of comparing yourself with your friends or being focused on your CGPA, but think more in terms of IUM is a platform for me to get the knowledge and the skills and the attitude to have my career after IUM. So if you look at this slide, you see that most people, uh, they're looking for a passion for business, right? They're looking for communication skills. They're looking for problem solving. These are basic skills which are so critical to, to a business. If you don't have these skills, like they cannot hire you. Even though you got a high CGPA, it's like, it's not relevant. But if you look on the left side, the majority of students, their expectations, their priority is very, very different from the priority of, their, of, of the employers. So there's a mismatch, okay? And so the question is, how do you get the skills necessary, such as passion for a business, communication skill, problem solving, uh, et cetera, et cetera? How do you get those skills? Obviously, if you've got a growth mindset, getting those skills is very easy. If you don't have a growth mindset, you will have this, this idea that, oh, I have to do everything to improve my pointer. I, I have to do like, you know, memorize this, memorize that, you know, even if I don't understand, I, it's okay, at least my CGPA is good. Uh, that's not the right way to think about it, okay? I understand why students are obsessed with the CGPA, but ultimately, if you think about it, that's, that's not how you measure whether or not you are gonna be successful or not. Okay, again, take the example of Amir, his CGPA is 2.8. That was his choice. He knew that by being involved in a lot of social projects, he would have a low CGPA. But because his dream was very clear, he always wanted to be uh, an entrepreneur, it, it didn't matter to him. And, and so this is something that I, I really hope you think about. Don't be obsessed with your CGPA. Don't be obsessed with comparing yourself to your friends. Just focus on becoming a better student. Whether you are a brilliant student or an average student or you're struggling, it doesn't matter. As long as you're progressing, you're headed in the right direction. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so this is just a uh, same uh, issue, but just slightly different. So written communication, problem solving, teamwork, uh, initiative, uh, work ethic. So CGPA doesn't even appear on this list. Now, don't misunderstanding, don't misunderstanding me. It's not that CGPA is not important. CGPA is important but that's not why people are gonna give you a job. Ultimately, it's, it's like, it's something that will attract the, the uh, employer and, and they might uh, 
you know, invite you to the interview because you got a good CGPA. But that's not what they're looking for. They're, they're not going to make, base the decision of whether to give you a job simply based on the CGPA. It's, do you have the skills that you need? So all the projects that we give you, all the assignments is there to develop your skills. And so if you're copy and pasting from the internet, you're not getting any skills, right? If you never take the, the role of a group leader, for example, you're never gonna develop leadership skills. One of the, the weird things in my class is so many students refuse to become group leaders. But when you talk to them alone, face to face, everyone says they want to be a leader. <laughs> And then when there's the opportunity in class, all of a sudden they don't want to be a leader anymore, right? So it's all about developing skills. Okay, next, next slide. In two minutes, inshallah, I will have finished and then we will take, I, I will open for Q&A. So sign of a fixed mindset. If you're always worried about what people think about you, you are spending a lot of try, time trying to look good in front of others. Now, what I mean by that is um, dieting is one issue, crazy diet in order to, you know, meet artificial uh, standards of beauty. That's, that's one thing that is completely unnecessary. Um, you are who you are. Just be happy with it. Um, the, the weird one is I know a lot of students, they feel happy when their friends do worse than them. I don't understand that. They're your friends. How can you be happy? And then uh, when their friends do better than them, they feel jealous in a negative way. They're your friends. You should be happy that they're doing good, right? And, and very often they, they don't really enjoy university life because they're always worried about, you know, oh, what, what will people think? You know, I shouldn't do this. I should do that, da, 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 da. So they, they basically, they cannot enjoy life. Right, so university is about working hard. Yes, it's also to explore, you know, de de develop new skills, explore new ideas, enjoy being a student. Right, it's not about working all the time and being in a library and, and so on and so forth. Okay, next slide. Uh, if you have a growth mindset, you just basically want to become a better person. That's it, as simple as that. When you're in front of other people, you are just yourself. You're not trying to be something you're not or someone you're not. You're not trying to pretend that, you know, you like this or you like that or, or whatever. Just literally be yourself. And if people like you, alhamdulillah. And if they don't like you, alhamdulillah. It's not your problem. It's their problem. Um, but a, a real test of, of your, uh, who you are is when your friends do badly, you should feel sad for them. You should have empathy for them, right? And when they do well, even if they do better than you, you should feel happy for them, right? So it's like other people's performance doesn't affect your performance. But if they do well, you're happy for them. And if they do badly, you're sad for them. Why? Because you, they're your friends. You know, friendship is something that is very, very precious. Um, and when you have this kind of attitude, you, you will realize that you can enjoy university life. Okay, next slide. Uh, I find that a lot of IUM students talk about working together and brotherhood, and at the same time, they're secretly competing with one another. Uh, I, I, I understand why, you know, that's kind of maybe human nature to compare one another to, you know, and so on and so forth. But really the, the best way to learn is if we can create a culture where literally students learn to cooperate with one another. So the students who are doing very well academically, they take it upon themselves, the, the responsibility to help those 
who are struggling, right? So let's say you're very good in mathematics and, and one of your friends is struggling with math. So you help them. Or you're very good in accounting and one of your friends is, is struggling with an account. You just help them. You don't give your assignment to them and they copy and paste. That's not helping them. But you explain to them what they didn't understand in class. And everybody has got strengths, everybody has weaknesses. So together you kind of create this nice cooperative working environment. And, and if you do that, it's, you'll find that university life will be very, very rewarding. Next slide. So this is something I, I just, it, it's so obvious, but it has to be uh, reminded or we have to remind one another. Sometimes at the beginning of the semester, I ask my students, how many people are happy with their results? And only 10% of people in the class raise their hands. And just to check that everybody's listening, I say, okay, how many people in the class is not happy with their results? 90% of hands go up. And then my question to the students, if you're not happy with the results, are you going to study in the same way? Are you going to have the same mindset? Because if you have the same way of studying and you have the same mindset and you expect different results, that, that just doesn't make sense. So there's either, there has to be a change of mindset or there has to be a change of study skills so that you get better results. Okay, next slide. So how do you develop a growth mindset? Well, this is the really exciting thing. It is nothing to do with genetics. It is nothing to do with personality. It is simply something that you believe, okay? So normally when my students discover about fixed mindset and growth mindset, a lot of my students actually have got a fixed mindset. And, and that's one of the reasons they're struggling. And then once they change their mindset, the problem disappears. And so you can go from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset within 24 hours. If you really want to do it and in, in a very systematic way, there's a book uh, on fix, uh, growth mindset and fixed mindset that is in the library or you can get it online, or there's a number of TED Talks and, and whatever that, that you can. So there's a lot of information that is easily accessible. Um, and then it's, it's up to you, you know? If people have got a fixed mindset and they're happy with a fixed mindset, that's not a problem, that's their choice, okay? But if you got a fixed mindset and you want to shift to a growth mindset, it's a question of changing what you believe, okay? Now there's maybe a little bit of soul searching, a little bit of uh, reading that you have to do, a little bit of research, but it's basically once you change your, your mind and you just say, I want to have a growth mindset, that's it, you changed, okay? So alhamdulillah, I've stuck to my 45 minutes that was given to me by the MC. Uh, so I, I'm very happy to answer uh, any questions. And if there's no questions, I can talk about this subject for another three hours. <laughs> so it's better if you give me questions, inshallah. Okay. okay. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Dr. Ridwan. I, uh, first, I would like to apologize because uh, I cannot uh, make it uh, the PowerPoint, PowerPoint to become a slideshow because there's a problem. So that's the thing. Uh, okay. Okay, I would like to open to all students here, or maybe others, lecturers who interested to ask questions. First, you can directly ask the questions, uh, just uh, give salam and then in introduce yourself, and, or you may post your questions in the chat. Okay. Okay, anyone interested to ask questions? No question. How many new students are, are online, by the way? Okay. Can we have a... 
gallery. Anyone, uh, any new student, you can raise your hand. Because this is really for the new students in particular. Okay. Ah, Putri Madhya, raise hand. Okay. Okay, one. Lagi? Uh, Fatiha. Two participants. Balkis, okay. Four participants. Okay, so this is once people start doing things, then the rest join in. So that's normal. That's normal. Okay. Okay. Before I comment, uh, okay, Putri Madia, Balkis, Ibn Nur, Nafis. You can see it, Dr. Ridwan? Yeah. Those the new students. We also have our professor here, Dr. Prof. Suhaimi, inshallah. Yeah. So as, as the people seem to be hesitant to ask, asking question, mm -hmm. the, the point that I really want to emphasize is there's nothing mysterious about being successful at university. But my observation is that we have a lot of students who don't really have any clear idea of what they want to do. Like they, they say, okay, I want to be an accountant or I want to do finance, but that's it. But if you say, so if you want to be an accountant, do you, do you want to do audit? Do you want to do tax? Uh, I don't know. If you want to do finance, do you want to do corporate finance? Do you want uh, planning? Or uh, I'm not sure. So the students who tend to do very well, they have a very clear picture of what they want to do after university. Okay, and, and so th that's one of the things I would encourage people is to try to think what would they like to do after university. And if you're not sure, then talk to people and, and see what are their ideas. Right, so for example, a simple way to think about it is, uh, do you like numbers or do you prefer dealing with people? Right. If you like numbers, then there's some options that are available for you. If you like dealing with people, it will be a completely different set of options. So by trial and error, you can kind of develop a, an idea of what you would like to do after university. But when that, when that is clear for you, then studying is very enjoyable because you know where you're going. Uh, Dr. Ridwan, uh, I think uh, while waiting, I just uh, students or uh, anyone want to pose a question. Uh, when we discuss about, I, I remember during my degree time, I tend to, uh, we are actually students are looking for the identity, right? Mm. Uh, so what are the things that, that can help them to know their strength, to, to, to help them to know what they, they want to achieve in their life? I think the things that you are sharing, the purpose of life, many many students are still struggling mm. on it. And then so, what are the things that can help them? So uh, th this is where um, one of the unique things about IUM is the fact that there's a lot of international students. And uh, my observation is that there are some students who don't know how to mix around and then other students who are very happy to mix around. And because they mix around, they, they get a lot of new knowledge from uh, different kinds of people. So for example, um, I mean, I personally, I, I got to know a lot of uh, Palestinian students. Uh, and, and so when you talk to Palestinian students and you see the, the challenges that they have in their daily life, you, it, it makes you think about your own experience and your own problems and you realize actually you don't have any problems. Compared to what they have to deal with, you don't actually have any problems. And so maybe part of that identity is you, you're exploring by, by discussing with other people. And then there's that, that realization that actually, yes, you have some problems, but compared to many other students, you actually don't have any problems. And then it's not that you feel happy that they have these problems, but it's more like you feel thankful that you have fewer problems than you assume. And it, it kind of, I don't know, it, it gives you more curiosity to find out about other people. And it's basically about 
having more ideas and then through this idea you you develop your identity alhamdulillah uh, dr ridwan we have questions in the chat box okay okay first question by faruki assalamualaikum yep. dr i'm faruki first year accounting student <clears throat> how do we handle living up to expectations ah this is a brilliant question because very this good. is a a very common uh, issue so the issue is expectations <clears throat> from whom okay so uh expectations from yourself from your family from your friends from your lectures um i think that one of the things that you have to learn as a student is you have to decide that there's some expectations which you have to take into consideration and then there's some expectations which are just unrealistic so for example um a lot of students in my experience insist on giving themselves a very high expectations in terms of their cgpa and i think that's not realistic now for sure there should be a minimum that you should not like you should not feel, fall below a certain level okay that's for sure but then if if like you okay i give you an, uh, an example i have some students if they get a b plus in my class for them it's a complete disaster and they come to my office and they start negotiating and i say look a b plus is a good grade and i said no sir it's 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 not i expected an a minus how did you decide that a b plus is not not a good grade right it's it's like where does this expectation come from in my book in my class if you get a b plus it's a good grade okay for you to get an a minus you have to deserve it but the thing is and this is the issue you i will not give a minus to a student simply because they memorize information i will only give a minus to a student who shows to me that they're thinking right that that they can use their intelligence not it's not simply about uh, memorizing information okay so um i can't give you a very simple straightforward um answer to this questions but one of the things that you're going to have to decide is what expectations are reasonable and what expectations are not reasonable my observation as a lecturer is a lot of students put expectations on themselves which are simply not re reasonable right and uh, that creates unnecessary stress for them okay 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 nurul uh, nabila okay how to deal with procrastination <laughs> thank you i and <laughs> okay so procrastination is a very uh, interesting issue um there is a video on youtube about procrastination which i sometimes show my students so if you type in ted talk procrastination then you will have that video that that will come up um generally people who procrastinate procrastinate because they're not so clear about their goals okay issues of time management is never actually only time management it's always about goal setting and very often what happens is we have students who are at university because their parents have a dream they might not have the same dream as their parents okay so that's why like it's always 50-50 because yes i'm doing this but it's really my parents who are forcing me to do this i actually would like to do something else um so my experience is a lot of procrastination is about goal setting so maybe you started doing a a course because your parents were you know encouraging you to do a course and then the more you discover about the course the more you realize that actually this is a very interesting course right and then the more interested you become then procrastination becomes less of an issue okay so it, i i think a lot of this has to do with goal setting and some of this has to do with 
you explore in more detail why is this course interesting. Uh, a good thing to do is simply talk to your seniors, uh, especially those seniors who are very excited, very motivated, talk to them, then they will, they will motivate you actually. So, so rely on your, your net social network to motivate you. And, and especially if you know that you're a procrastinator, ask your friends who are not procrastinator to help you to uh, better manage your time. Uh, we have another question. Yeah. Uh, Nur Nuralia Shahbuddin. I'm a third year BBA student. How yeah. can you then establish a professional network? Okay. So uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean by a professional network. Um, but one of the things that you can do as a student, especially if you're a BBA student, is there is an institute called the Malaysian Institute of Management. And as a student, I think it costs you like 50 ringgit. And they have network opportunities, I think, once a week. Now, I don't, I don't know what happened during COVID-19, whether it all became online or whatever. But I can tell you a story about uh, networking. So um, earlier in the talk, I talked about Amir and you know his uh the student who's now doing digital marketing he attended a uh, business network uh, event uh, that was organized by a company called bni and he just said it was the best thing ever he met a lot of ceos he, he let he met a lot of you know potential customers so his business really boomed a lot because of that, right? So, so there are some professional organizations that help you develop your professional network. Okay, so the, that, that one, Malaysian Institute of Management, MIM, uh, that, that's an easy one to do. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I have a question. My name is Xu Tianzhe. Uh, okay. I would like to ask, uh, uh, I always have problem with changing. So uh, I'm afraid of the changing uh, and new scene. Yeah. So I don't, I always don't want to step out of my com comfort zone. So yeah. how, how can I solve it? Okay, so this is something that I actually talk in my class. And uh, one of the things that you can do very easily is find friends to help you get out of your comfort zone. So if you're doing something new alone, it's very scary. If you're doing something new with a close friend, it becomes a lot easier. So uh, that, that's why one of the things that is really important when you're in IUM, don't think about studying alone, but studying with friends. And friends can help you um, neutralize your weaknesses, right? So if, if you are weak in one area, your friends can kind of provide support in that area. And then if you're very strong in another area, you can help your friends in that area. So it becomes a win-win scenario. Um, so yeah, that's it. Find a friend who, and together you, you discover new things together. Okay, thank you, doctor. By the way, there, there's a lot of basic things which I didn't want to talk about because it's not really directly related to growth mindset, but they're still very, very important. Uh, one of the biggest problems on campus is the number of hours that students sleep. You need to sleep more, okay? A lot of students are going to bed very, very late and they, they basically, they're going to class, they're half asleep. That's one issue. Second, uh, the diet is not balanced. Okay, I realize that on campus, the food is not that good, actually, to be honest. Um, but 
you know, as much as possible, try to have a, a healthy diet. Uh, and then the third thing that is very important is fitness, right? So have regular exercise and, and that allows you to deal with the stress of being a university student. Okay, sorry, I, I interrupted you, uh, Dr. Afifa. I think that's a good point also for students. Yeah, late sleep is very, very. I also very agree with that. Yeah. Uh, uh I think uh, now it's already eleven six. Uh, uh, six minutes. Any more questions? I just open one more question, or that we are done. I think we're done. No more questions. I would like to thank for Dr. Ridwan. Uh, for sharing. I think there's a lot, I think, from the stories for students that you share. And then it's very, very important for yeah. students, not only for students, for me, myself, it's just a reminder, now I'm about another two years for becoming 40. So we have, we really need to have our dreams, yeah? dreams and our priorities. Yeah. When you, when you know your priorities, you can have a peace of mind. And then above that, uh, when the third one start the sessions, the key, the only key is for a Muslim to success is, is our faith, yeah? our iman billah, yeah? because it will contribute to the peace of mind. Like uh, uh, we know that that's not, uh, we are not the one who manage everything. Yeah? We are the one who, for example, like Dr. Don mentions, we, uh, we can put efforts, we can, uh, we will, will always face difficulties in life. The problems will keep coming, how we respond. To the problems is the key. Uh, to uh, which we what can help us from the, the thought is when you have growth mindset, you can have a good response. Whatever things come to your your life, eh? you can you will be able to face it with the right mindset. Eh? Because Inshallah. there's always way. There's always way to solve problems. Uh, uh, and 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 okay, so I, I I wasn't going to talk about this, but as you mentioned, it is probably a good thing to mention. Uh, the the other thing to remember with when you're talking about iman and and this is a mention in Surah Baqarah mm -hmm. is sometimes we have dreams which are bad for us, mm -hmm. but we don't realize it, mm -hmm. and so these dreams do not come true, and and we think that. Allah doesn't love us, but actually Allah loves us by not making our dreams come true. So personally, many, many, many times in my life, I wanted to be a billionaire and I want to be a successful entrepreneur. And, and I've had all these business ideas. But they've never worked. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm, you know, a little bit older and wiser, I realized that if I was a millionaire, I my life would be completely different and it would, there would not be the same baraka. Agree, agree. Okay, doctor. Yes, uh, there's also just to share with the audience and maybe Dr. Ridwan and others. I'm dealing this this issue with my, uh, my eldest son now mm. uh, because he always said, I keep uh, praying to Allah, but he doesn't grant my, my prayers. Eh? But that's why the dreams and the things maybe that you want is not good for you and he's preparing for you to go the best thing but it need time it need time for, for, for example for us you student students for lecturers also we have to be patient and we have to be positive hopeful uh, uh, this is the things that can always um, i think uh, make us strong to face whatever things come mm. to us right inshallah mm. uh, i think that's all uh, uh, for our session today thank you very much dr ridwan for sharing your thought. Actually, he's giving a uh, training outside. We are very lucky to have uh, his sharing session with us. Uh, and then we have another, just to check. And, uh, okay, I think that's all. Uh, uh, I would like to thank all the students. Alhamdulillah, we have about uh, just now 53 participants yeah, join this program. Inshallah, this program also we will uh, upload in the uh, KNRS TV yeah, with uh, MSA student. Uh, for those students who are unable to join the sessions, uh, we will uh, share the video so that others can benefit from the sessions. Inshallah. We will have uh, we will have more uh, programs to students. Inshallah, you can give your suggestion. Inshallah, uh, Islamization unit will work with MSS. We will try to address the concerns of the students, yeah? and then uh, in order the, the purpose is to help each other, yeah? to help each other uh, in the 
path of knowledge insyaallah we, we when we have a sincere intentions both educators and the stu uh, uh, students insyaallah allah will always open doors for us to uh, improve ourselves eh, to be a better person i think with that uh, uh, we i will end this session with tasbih kafarah and surah as subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa as inna al insana lafi khus illa alladhina amanu wa amilus salihat Alhamdulillah, I would like to uh, 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 some glitch uh, technical problems from both of us. Hopefully, you still can benefit with the content. Eh? Thank you very much. <laughs>